The results of this experiment have been way more extreme than I expected them to be, but it does help to illustrate the point. In this video, we're gonna be talking about different grow mediums, different soil mixes, that sort of thing, and how they impact germination, as well as early growth of your chili pepper seeds. Let's get inside the germinator and see what I've been getting up to. Chili plants like to have a soil that drains really well. I say this over and over in my videos because it is hugely important. I mentioned quite a bit in my beginner's guide series, which if you are new to growing chilies, go check that out as soon as you finish watching this video. And I'll give you lots of tips and hints on how to get a great yield at the end of the season. Chili's roots don't like to sit in water. They like a period of kind of, not dry, but they like to dry out a little bit in between waterings, which is again, another episode in the beginner's guide where I talk about the correct way to water. You shouldn't be watering a little bit, a little bit every day because that can cause some issues and uh, you shouldn't have your roots sitting in water for days on end. And you'll see in the experiment that I've done here, that that is exactly what's happened and you'll see the effect of that. And if you're seeing results similar to the results I'm getting here with this experiment, then you know what the problem is. A lot of people use Coca-Cola, they actually mix it into their soil mix. I don't include anything that has water retaining properties. The only water retention that I need is coming from quality compost. If you're buying compost, make sure that it does not have any extras or additives in it. Not to have too many nutrient additives, because sometimes that can be problematic, especially for young seedlings, if you're using it in the early stages. But the big one to watch out for is water retention properties. They sometimes add things, uh, best case scenario, they're adding things like Coca-Cola. Worst case scenario, they're using these little beads that soak up water. Now your plants are probably gonna grow, but they'll grow far better if they didn't have that. There are three things that I've tried to do here with this experiment, or three different types of soils. Number one is peat moss. Now peat moss, there's lots of controversy around that anyway. You probably shouldn't be using peat moss because it's not great for the environment. I will never use peat moss with any of my plants ever again because yeah, the results have been shocking. This is just straight up Irish peat moss. Now, don't let the green on top worry too much. That's going to happen when there is a lot of moisture around. But the thing to take note of here is the actual growth. The germination happened pretty quick. And you can see that, well, there's some little seedlings here. What's interesting to see is just how small they are, firstly, and secondly, just how many have died. Now, that one over there has already got some true leaves coming through. We can see there, that's a true leaf. So as cute as that looks, <laughs> that's not a good thing. After 50 days, this plant should be probably about there, about 10 centimeters above the plant here, and it should have a lot more true leaves. Now, you can see that that's the most successful plant in this tray. Uh, you can see that these here, the others are not looking very healthy at all. I'm surprised they're still alive. It just shows how resilient chili peppers can be. But you can see some others here have just completely died. I don't think that's got too much longer to go. I'm amazed it's still standing, but that's been like that for probably the last 30 days. Let's pop one of these out and you can see what the root system's doing. That's the root structure of the best plant that we have here. Now I could replant this in some decent soil and I'd probably get some great results, which I may do, we'll see. Oops, if I don't lose it. But you can see there, it's just not spreading its roots. After 50 days, these roots should be filling that cell very easily, but that is certainly not the case. So bear in mind, these plants, 50 days old. Let's take a look at something that is more like 28 days old and see how they're doing. And again, you can see similar results. I did the same sort of thing as I did with the other tray. Now bear in mind, peat moss does not have any nutrients. So you might be thinking, well, this is to do with lack of nutrients. That is certainly not the case. I have enriched the peat moss and it should be more than enough nutrients for this. It's so difficult to keep the moisture levels exactly where they need to be. And hey, I might be doing something completely wrong. This it just does not suit my growing style. And obviously I get great results when I'm doing it the way I normally do it. Those plants over there, you would say that those were planted way before the ones on this side. Well, that's not the case. Those ones at the back there, seed tray T8, that was done 17 days ago on the 17th of February. 17 days ago versus 28. The only difference here is that there's a mix of the peat moss and the compost. So it allows a little bit more drainage because compost, obviously it does hold some moisture, but it also allows good drainage. 
and yeah you can see the results we already got some good true leaves coming through there those are going to be healthy i'll be able to use those these plants here i'm not going to be using uh it's just not worth it and i really need to get them out of here because i'm just wasting real estate so i'll get some of my other plants in there we can see that these here are looking healthy as well these were started at the same time as the sea tray t8 and uh, that was what 17 days ago and these are looking great they're under grow lights as well, which I have on for the same period of time as the other seed trays. Uh, all of them are on for 16 hours on and eight hours off. But these are looking good. Uh, some are a bit younger. Some of these are super hot and some that I expect to be growing a bit slower. But yeah, these are looking far healthier than the ones that are in pure peat moss. This propagator still has its lid on because I'm still trying to germinate some of the seeds that are in here. This has been going for 11 days. We still have quite a bit of germination going on, but this contains my ideal seed starting mix, which is one part vermiculite, one part perlite, and one part unenriched compost, preferably your own homemade compost. Or if you have to buy it, make sure you get one that has the least amount of added nutrients or any water retaining qualities because it's just going to cause some issues. Now I'm actually doing some experimentation with this and I will show you uh, the results of that experiment very soon as well, which are very interesting. And uh, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. I can't wait to remove the lid properly, uh, but yeah, we've still got a few that need to germinate and we'll give it probably another week and then we'll take the lid off. Now you don't have to use this soil starting mix. Plain compost will do the job as well. But uh, this here, it really just works very well for me. The vermiculite does have some level of water retaining qualities. That's this, uh, the brown stuff or the, or it looks like kind of goldy sort of color. Uh, difficult to show you, but the vermiculite does have some level of water retaining qualities, but it still provides aeration. It lightens up the soil and allows us to completely drain whenever I water it. So the roots grab what they need. And then after a while, it's going to, dry up and yeah you'll get some great growth you'll see these things are just going to fly in comparison to some of the others now let me show you one more extreme example which kind of blew my mind i mean we all know hydroponics is the future it is a great way to grow i will be doing some hydroponics this year uh, this here is a system that i got from the let pot guys and it's a fantastic little system i actually got another one that i'm starting up over here i'll be planting some seeds today but have a look at this this is 23 days since i planted these seeds these are jalapenos the size of these cotyledons are just massive in comparison to all the other plants. Uh, these are looking really healthy. If we have a look, I'll pull one out. You can see the root system. That's just amazing. Now, you may be thinking, wait, this is contrary to what I've been saying in terms of the roots needing to breathe in between waterings because these roots are sitting directly in nutrients, directly in the water that's inside this container. Now, there's a bit of a difference there. There is a pump in there that's circulating the nutrients, circulating the water that's in there. It is creating and introducing some oxygen, some air. So the roots are constantly getting that. If there wasn't a pump in there, this is most likely going to not be a very happy system. There is, of course, the upper roots that are sitting up at the top there. Uh, those aren't directly in water. The system is probably at about about this level right now and it will automatically fill up again later and it, this will just keep using what it needs to but it's seriously incredible to see how big these cotyledons are these are my cc jalapeno i still have some stock in my seed store if you want that's chilichumpseeds.com but cc jalapeno if i compare these to another cc jalapeno let's actually i'll take you over to one that's older than this it's a similar size but just not as impressively big as the ones in the hydroponics and also bear in mind that that is about a week older as well still looking healthy so i'm not too worried now i will be growing some plants hydroponically this year and you'll see that through my year i've got a couple systems that i'll be using ones that you've seen in the past that i've used and some new ones as well so i'm quite keen on that but i'm not quite ready to move across to full hydroponics with all my plants i still love growing them in soil as well if you're interested in discussing the results of this experiment maybe you have your own thoughts on it uh, or you want to know some more details 
Uh, or you want to learn about some other experiments I'm busy working on, or maybe you want to talk about a hot sauce you've been trying to develop. I do have Patreon as well as YouTube memberships. You can sign up for either one of those, which helps support the channel, of course, but it gives you access to my private Discord server. You can then have a little bit more access to me. That's where I spend a lot of my time is on that private side. I do have a public Discord channel, which I've just started up recently. And if you want to have access to that, I do go into there every now and then, but of course, the majority of my time is going to be spent on the private side. It's only fair to uh, my paying patrons and YouTube members. I'll leave links for all that down below in the description. I know this is not a very scientific experiment. I would need a far bigger sample size to be able to make it more scientific. I just do not have the time. I do not have the inclination, to be honest. And I, well, I know what the results are going to be because I've done this in the past. The soil mixes that I use, the nutrient levels and all that sort of thing that I share with you on my channel, it's been down to trial and error. It's something I've been doing for many, many years and I get great results. Hopefully, if you go have a look back at some of my previous year's grow videos, you'll see the results I get. If you want to learn about three mistakes that you might be making when trying to germinate your seeds, have a look at this video over here and it should help you out. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching and stay spicy.